Yes. We will start probably with uh, just some pending questions on part A, which were not answered yet. So these are addressed to Daniel Yu. Um, so is there a comparison in prices with polyurethane, for example, for the same isolating requirements? And are there performances curves which show the aging of those products? So about the price, so uh, of course the price of this new uh, super insulating material uh, uh, is higher for the same uh, thermal uh, resistance, but uh, there are uh, a few publications uh, which uh, show clearly that uh, for innovation, for example, downtown where the space is very expensive, uh, super insulating uh, material uh, are competitive uh, because uh, you save uh, space. So uh, for retrofitting, the question of price uh, has to be considered as a global price, not only uh, taking into account the price of a product, but also uh, the, the total cost, the total price, uh, including uh, uh, the space saving for uh, in building. Uh, about uh, aging, uh, yes, there are some curve about aging. Uh, for example, at EMPA or in Switzerland at our ZI Bayern, they did a lot of work about uh, aging. I did not present uh, such curves, but you can find some uh, publication. Uh, from, uh, for example, the group working at EMPA, Samuel Brunner, uh, Karim uh, Ghazi Wakili, and uh, they publish a few interesting uh, uh, results about the aging of the product and at ZDI Bayern, uh, Ulrich Heinemann and, and the group from ZDI Bayern, you can find some interesting uh, information. Okay, very good. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, moving on to the Aerocoins project, there are at least three questions, four questions at this point. Um, what, are, what other materials are used to produce aerogels except for silica? What are the differences in performance? And how will the products be used? How to make them durable? Uh, the first two questions. So, yeah, it's Eunate speaking. Concerning the first question, so, I mean, in aeroplanes we haven't uh, done, it, done it, but uh, my aerogen materials can also be prepared uh, not only using silica precursors, but other kind of precursors like uh, polymers, organic uh, polymers. And in terms of performances, there are going to be differences. Uh, but I mean, I cannot give you now much detail on that. Um, concerning the second uh, question, uh, the aeroplanes product, uh, we are going to use it uh, on the internal part of the wall. What uh, does that mean? That uh, the design and the formulation we have, uh, we are developing. Is exclusive for internal. I think uh, it could also be used for the external part of the envelope. But uh, in, during the project, we are going only to to validate its performance on the internal part of, uh, of, the, of the envelope and on the in walls only only in walls. And how to make them more durable? Um, I don't know what. The question means that, of course, durability and aging, it's, a, it's something very important that needs to be studied and that we will also need to consider. Mm. Okay, the next question is what is the light transmittance of the aerogels? Uh, light, okay. Yeah, well, within aerocons, maybe, I mean, I have some, some pictures of our aerogel reference material. But, uh, for example, for us, uh, transparency, it's not the goal because uh, because of the application we are looking for. So that's not important uh, within Aerocase. We are not looking for that because at the end it's going to be 
installed in the internal part of the envelope, and then uh, above that, uh, on top of that, you will need to put the final final uh, layer of uh, whatever. So that's not important for us. Um, concerning the other question about to uh, read. Yes, so we have uh, within Ericons, of course, we have uh, met uh, the objective of preparing aerogels without uh, supercritical dragging. It, it is possible. So, uh, because, uh, what, I mean, we want to, I think it's important to, sorry, we want to improve the mechanical properties of the aerogels. So for that, you are uh, at the end. Uh, we have prepared hybrid uh, silica organic uh, materials. So on the same what that you reinforce mechanical properties, that reinforcement uh, allows you to to obtain your material not using supercritical drying. So yes, this goal has been achieved. I don't know if it's clear. Okay, I propose uh, we are receiving uh, many questions as we go. Yeah. I propose that we um, uh, ask just a couple of questions per topic, and if there is more time, we can uh, follow with the rest, or we can find another way to answer the questions afterwards. So I propose to continue with the following uh, project. Okay. Give me a second. I think that my computer has frozen. Okay. Uh, related to the hyping project, what is the thermal conductivity of the hyping aerogels and what will the cost of the aerogel be? Uh, the cost of the aerogel render compared to the render developed by EMPA and fix it in Switzerland. Um. <coughs> In terms of thermal conductivity measurements uh, for hyponarogel, um, we have now a series of um, uh, hyponarogel uh, produced, and uh, we are now choosing what will be the right uh, choice of uh, aerogel uh, to be introduced into paint and plaster and uh, the panel system, and they all seem to be different. And um, we are measuring the thermal conductivity uh, initially just on the aerogel on its own, and then by introducing the aerogel into the paint and the plaster system, which might be the lot easier way to measure the aerogel. So um, as it is, we are also comparing the thermal conductivity versus density of uh, different aerogels that we have produced. Um, I have so, got some data, but maybe not on top of my head. Um, but uh, if you are interested, I can uh, you can drop me an email and I can pass some information on that. Uh, but again, with respect to the confidential information that we can probably share. Um, and uh, I can only for now give you uh, the uh, thermal conductivity value of uh, aerogel with a plaster system, in, in which was displayed in, in one of my slides. With regards to the cost of the aerogel, um, uh, the, the aerogel company that we've been working with has been traditionally making a monolith aerogel using supercritical drying process. And the cost of the aerogel has been very high. And uh, now with this process route, we expect it to be reduced at least 10 times. Um, and uh, also for the plaster system, we have estimated cost versus performance uh, uh, for various uh, formulations that we could achieve. Uh, we we expect it to be pretty much same or lower, but. Um, I'm not sure if it would be very competitive as the current uh, building materials are quite cheap at the moment. Uh, so we might have some um, a little pricing issues in there. But I don't have a direct comparison between MPAS or uh, Fixed Switzerland product. Uh, I could again discuss this with our partner who is actually working on the plaster system and probably give you some information if I have more, um, if you could drop me an email. Thank you, Siva. Uh, we move on to the nano-insulate project. Uh, the questions at this point are, uh, at which pressure was the 3.6 uh, millivolts per uh, uh, 
Rita Kelvin for the new open porous monolithic material measured, and what are if there are any results published, uh, reports on the novel measurement methods. Okay, um, now the pressure of the 3.6 milliwatt um, meter Kelvin was measured was a normal um, vacuum pressure of, a, of a, I think it was around 0 0.1 millibars. It was certainly below uh, 1 millibar. Um, but it was normal um, pressures that would be used for a, for a, for a silica, fume silica core and with very comparable uh, performance. Uh, there are results published on um, in, in terms of uh, the aerogel developments and in terms of the novel measurements methods um, I that, that's a very good question I'm not certain if those results have been published yet uh, or, or but but there should be something coming out very good there is at this moment also a general question for all the speakers um, what is your target cost for a thermal R uh, is one? Uh, we've got to work that backwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, if R equals one, then your thickness would be uh, seven millimeters. That's, that's quite a tricky thickness for a, for a VIP. But just to give you an idea, our original target cost or, or a price of the product was a, a value of about seven euros for an R value of two, which would be three and a half euros for an R value of one, of course. Um, realistically, um, the R value of uh, VIPs will be, in general, a lot higher than that, starting at five um, uh, and there up. Uh, but that kind of cost, what, what we're looking at is um, a cost uh, with a premium over existing materials, but that premium should be less than about 50%. Any of the other speakers? No, in that case, uh, I don't know if anybody has a different opinion. Uh, I propose to continue, and uh, we can have some more questions afterwards. Uh, just, Mariana, if I may comment on um, one of the questions about the durability of aerogel, how to improve the durability of aerogel. Please, yes. Um, durability of aerogel could be affected either uh, by mechanical forces when it's been introduced into a different medium, or it could be affected by um, a moisture um, or uh, enter of uh, water or something to break the pore structures. Uh, so that that's uh, that that those are the reasons that affects the durability of the aerogel. So that is actually being addressed in Hypen project uh, by making it more robust, uh, making the silica aerogel walls much stronger, and also by doing a hydrophobic treatment um, to make it a moisture or water barrier system. Very good, thank you.